six music today from two mickey spangles and the posse from midday music balloon with julie splash but now admiral cornballs and buckulees hello and welcome to the big british castle it's time for adam and joe to broadcast on the radio there'll be some music and some random talking in between and then eventually the whole thing will just end rapping rapping i'm christmas rapping i'm a local councillor there's rates to be capping i rap here and a rap there oh, it's oh. I only got two lines in you did very well <laughs> imagine if you were in like a really terrifying detroit nightclub <laughs> rapping against some really tough rappers like eight mile like eight mile and you came on stage and the <laughs> crowd were, hoo, hoo, hoo. you know there was really intimidating atmosphere and and you came out with that rapping rapping i'm christmas rapping i work for the council how's it go i'm a local councillor there's rates to be capping yeah 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 so strong opening couplet you're saying but then you sort of <laughs> collapsed <laughs> i mean the crowd would be behind you for that they'd be yeah. gasping <laughs> kind of noise that's how eminem started that's an accurate evocation of the first time is Eminem it? stepped out onto the boards. Really? Mm hmm It's amazing. Hey, listeners, this is Adam. Hey, this is Joe. Welcome to the Adam and Joe radio show here on BBC Six Music on this kind of weird Saturday morning where everything's switching to winter. Yeah, boy. Do the clocks even go uh, Possibly, but it's all sort of been cooled off today, hasn't it, this morning? It's a little nip in the air. Three weeks they go forward, is really? it? Really? Oh, I don't know. But it's, it's very windy soon, across it? the British Isles. There Gales is in the north... It's all over. My elbow's hurting. Oh, dear. The nasty weather's not agreeing with my elbow. Your rheumatism. Yes. Oh, dear. Do you get that seasonal-related aches and pains Not yet? really. No. Wait for it. There's a tiny little bit of uh, depression in the air, though. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're right. Seasonal depression. Seasonal depression It's just disorder. a little bump. It's going to be Christmas soon. Don't worry about it. Ah, oh, that's true. It's going to be Santa time. But Santa listen, party time. We've got all sorts of stuff coming up in the show. We've got Text the Nation, the nation's favourite feature. We've got Retro Text the Nation, the nation's second favourite feature. Uh, we've got Future Text the Nation. We've got Medieval <laughs> Text the Nation. We've got Sci-Fi Text the Nation. <laughs> and of course, we've got Japanese Text the Nation and our new feature mumble to the nation no that's not true only two of those are real it would be ridiculous to fill the show with hundreds of different versions of the same uh segment that would one, be madness the, the one segment that we thought up two years ago and we've never <laughs> been able to think up of a, a different we segment thought it up. <laughs> <laughs> we did we thought up the idea of texting a radio we thought, program we thought up the idea of calling it text the nation <laughs> that's an idea isn't it <laughs> just because many other people have have it have have it we'll be um going into that area as well of uh, of ideas and stolen jokes we're going to have an amazing stolen joke face off so stay tuned for that plus there's a black squadron command coming up any moment but we're going to have a little bit more music first a little bit more music mate do you know what before you heard the song we heard at the top of the show the intro yes. song mate, mate that was rapping from young mc Oh, great. Yeah, with know-how. He's great. An, ed an educated rapper from it's the past. It's so great to hear a young MC rapping. Isn't it? There's so many old MCs. It's That's good true. to let the youngsters through. It's great. I, I feel that about pop music in general. It, it's so dominated by the older folk. Uh, it's true, man. Why don't they let some young artists come through once in a while? I'd like to set up some kind of young rapping scheme. And to get the youngsters to get involved. The youngsters, to get the under-20s yes. rapping. Because there's so many... Uh, over 60s That's right. rapping, it's becoming tedious. All the geriatric rappers, I'm so get sick off, of them. Get off the stage, I'm Grandad. sick give, of them, mate! Give the kids a chance. I'm so sick of them, they make me so angry, you know I swear I'll pummel them, that mate! That doesn't really work. Why? An angry Australian accent. It's oil on water. Australians don't get, really get angry. Some of them do, mate, when they're out in the outback and their sword slips and they cut their fingers. Their sword yeah, slips? Yeah, they're using they their sword for the outback? chopping the brush back. Okay. Uh, With a sword. Would that be a sword? Yeah, mate, that's what it's called. And when <laughs> yeah, it slips mate. and it nicks your finger, that makes you angry. Try it! Play the record, I think, maybe. Yeah, this is Wild Beasts. With all the King's men. There is an elite listening force known as Black Squadron. They are trained to rise early on a Saturday morning and listen to the very beginning of the Adam and Joe show live on Six Music. They don't just listen when it's convenient later in the week with the iPlayer or the podcast. They listen now, in the present, without the ability to skip past the bits they don't like. Black Squadron, we salute you. 
Yes, it's time for another one of our brand new, very exciting, innovative Black Squadron photo commands. Well, the photo command is much better. I mean, uh, it, in the olden days, Black Squadron used to be issued just a random command, like mm. hide or something. We had no evidence, really, that people had done it. Exactly. Analog commands, w- which were completely atavistic in this digital age. Yeah. What was the other one? Bread in pocket. Bread in pocket. I mean, I trust Black Squadron that they would have definitely had ble- bread in their pockets. Yeah, oh, they did. And in fact, people used to send us photos back then. Yeah, but not many. But now, now it's, it's uh, integral to the command. We're going to give you a kind of a photo theme, Black Squadron, and we'd like you to race to send in a picture along this theme. And there's no winner, of course. No. Not a competition. It's not about How that. do we describe it? Just a fun interactive a f- event fun random scrabble something like that scrabble S- no that, that's confusing anyway we're going to give you a command we'd like you to send a photo in of you doing the command so get your photo equipment ready let me just tell you before we do that bit of black squadron news did you know this about um the venezuelan president hugo chavez venezuelan uh in may of this year um he oh i wrote a little rhyme here i forgot i wrote the rhyme like I can rap about. Some people think he's wicked. Some people think he's not. But he's a Venezuelan president. He's the only one I got. Hugo Chavez. Hugo Chavez. Mm. I put it in brackets. So maybe I should have uh, forgotten about it. No, that was good. Thanks. Anyway, Hugo Chavez. He's a Venezuelan president. I can't say that. And he started to implement a four-part color-coded revolutionary reading plan this year. The goal of which, this is true, listeners, the goal of which is the democratization of books and reading with a new conception of reading as a collective act under the fundamental values and principles of revolutionary socialism. Mm. I'm not making this up. No, he's a good guy. He was the guy (coughs) that Ken Livingstone went to try and do a deal for petrol uh, uh, on London transport, wasn't he? Yeah. That was a little bit controversial. He's a controversial figure. He's got very um, polarised political views. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, it's true. Anyway, the government in Venezuela is organising and encouraging the formation of state-sponsored book clubs mm. or revolutionary reading squads, which will follow a reading set list. squads. Yeah, reading squads, which will follow a set list of a hundred books the government has drawn up. They're all by Nick Hornby, apparently. No, it's not true. In all. There are four phases to the curriculum, initially enticing readers with literature and then progressing through to books. You must a- read Cormac McCarthy's The Road. <laughs> read right. it now. Everybody must read it. It's true. It's very good. Have you read it? No. Well, you should. <clears throat> What's the one about the dog? The autistic boy and the dog? Um, Johnny and Tibbles. You must read Johnny and Tibbles. That's a Venezuelan accent. <laughs> oh, you will be shot! <laughs> Similar to the. It's a very sort of, strange, sort of very broad, bad Nazi. Here are the uh, actual squadrons that Hugo Chavez is implementing. Red Squadron readers in- uh, introduced to books that encourage the reader to empath- empathize with humanity before politics. Green Squadron will work on deconstructing the capitalist worldview through reading and discussion of texts mm. about our true symbols. Orange Squadron focuses on consolidating the reader as an individual and collective subject of the socialist and revolutionary project. And fourth and finally, Mm. Black Squadron. Yes. Devoted to sharing textual tools for cultural resistance against the ideological cultural attacks of the imperialists. Yes. So in a way, they're like the key squadron there in Chavez's reading Do you think we could do a link, some kind of a link up? I was hoping that we might. Can we get them on the phone? Surely someone... Or a leader, a Black Squadron leader. Because they can get this show in Venezuela, can't they? If you live in Venezuela and you <laughs> can get in contact with a Black Squadron <laughs> member, then please email us, adamandjoe.sixmusicatbbc.co.uk. I mean... Can you imagine if, if those people were actually uh, reading their, you know, sharing their textual tools for cultural resistance mm. and listening live to this show? Wow. They would be the ultimate Black Squadron They member. really would. I mean, obviously, they've got a very particular political doctrine. Yeah. And are we suggesting that our Black Squadron share the same views? Well, they could dovetail, couldn't they? they I mean, could. They I'm know. sure there's areas where they overlap. Sure. I mean, people are people. Aren't they? <laughs> right? You could write a song about that. <laughs> 
So anyway, maybe we should issue our command for our Black Squadron. Yes, and remember, listeners, if you do uh, text us a or email us a photo, or if you text us a photo, your text will be charged at your standard message rate. That's what it says. But actually, they're sometimes a bit more expensive, aren't they? Got to be careful. To send a Got to be aware of the charges. So we're just saying that it's not our fault. Exactly. No. And by the way, after um, Admiral Cornballs issues the command for Black Squadron, we're going to have a free play. Uh, it's a one-hit wonder by the Ombres. Let it out. Let it all hang out. The first of three 60s-themed free plays of nice. the listeners. But first, here is the command. Stand by, Black Squadron. Cameras and cell phones at the ready. Here is your command. Backwards clothes! That was Neil Young with Harvest Moon, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, the Black Squadron command has been issued, it was b- backwards clothes, and uh, we've already had quite a few photos in. Some of them are pretty startling. <laughs> Who's that? What's going on there, Adam? That Who's guy, that? he's reversed his clothes and he's... Or she. ...duck... A picture is that kevin spacey's face i don't think so i don't know whose face that is someone i mean this is very effective because it's a jacket and a shirt and tie reversed so it really reads you know if you just reverse a a red jumper yeah it maybe doesn't punch through but this is really happening isn't it that's a lady you're right and the lady and on the back of her head she's put some kind of a mask so there's that one uh, these are anonymous because they're they're by text this is from where well, there was rather an attractive lady <laughs> she's gone away and it suddenly made me think wow maybe we could be on to some kind of new fashion trend here yeah backwards clothes yeah well i mean in the hip-hop like Chris community Cross. sure they 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 wear their trousers she's backwards, gone don't they? but has there any ever, ever been any significant move in the indie pop community to wear your shirts backwards nah, she's attractive as well but she wasn't the one i was thinking of what sorry mate has have people went worn their shirts backwards properly uh crisscross d- just did the trousers didn't they? yeah no one's really done the shirts. no that's exciting that's the next we could be on to i mean fashion's desperate isn't it it's gone all the way back to the 80s and suddenly here's a new door opening yeah into the future <laughs> future door anyway uh keep those photos coming in for the next four minutes because of course black squadron stand down at half past nine that'll be violating various rules to send them in after then our producer james just as neil young was fading out there said could you get into lady hawk before the news mm. i was thinking that's not that's quite short notice to get into like a whole band <laughs> oh i see <laughs> <laughs> you know she's okay but i don't know if i can get into her before the news yeah now that sounds dirty doesn't it yeah listen here's magic by lady hawk yes yeah lady hawk on adam and joe she's in not the morning. yeah but i was ah yeah yeah you were imagining her i was german she sounds i mean they sound exactly like what are the other ones from uh australia mate uh yeah, the empire of the empire sun empire of the sun well it's very fashionable to sound it's like so that isn't it fashionable to sound like that isn't it? and to dress wouldn't like it be amazing if pons? um uh, talking of dressing like a giant pons wouldn't it be amazing if someone from black squadron spent the whole day in the backwards clothes yeah i like, actually went out tonight went to the supermarket and if anyone commented just you know said eh, i think you know it's like super fashionable i'd like to see a picture of someone out in the street dressed like that certainly. yeah yeah that would be brave consider that an incitement but now it's time to stand you down black squadron uh so at the ready Apart from this girl who i've slightly fallen in love with <laughs> she can not stand down she can come over yeah uh okay it's time to stand down here's the jingle stand down your work is done You've earned yourself a nice warm bath and maybe a nice little bun. Super uh, furry animals. Sorry, uh, Adam. Uh, uh, with Hello Sunshine. Uh, Is that what you were going to say as well? Yeah, exactly what I was going to uh, say. What coincidence. That was taken from their 2003 album, Phantom Power. Hey, listeners, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Very nice to have you along this Saturday morning. Now, Joe, I, I can remember going out to dinner with friends and it being quite uncomfortable to have quite a sweet drink, for instance, if we were having sangria, mm. to the point where I had to say, that's it, I can't have any more. Mm. The dentist diagnosed, really, that I did have sensitive teeth. Mm. Mm. I felt I hadn't been looking after my teeth properly. Mm. I started using Boggins. There's the whitening version over there. That's my favourite. It mm. sits in my bathroom all the time. It ticks all the boxes, really, for me. It keeps my teeth white. Not sure how it does it, but it seems to work. <sighs> hey, listen, do you mind if... um i come and make a commercial with you it's just i work for boggins and uh i'm just gonna do it on my camcorder right uh in your actual kitchen or bathroom it's gonna be very naturalistic and real oh. but i feel that your honest 
relationship with the product Boggins captured in a very honest way. Yeah. It's really going to communicate to right. consumers. And well, other people who have this problem that some people see as trivial, but actually we know is actually a very serious problem. Well, it was t it was tough for me because I, after a while, I couldn't have any more sangria. Well, yeah, and you do like to drink heavily. I love sangria. Yeah, at it's dinner party. A sort of right. Okay. Um, you want to make a commercial? Well, it's a bit weird for me because I was just confiding in you as a friend mm -hmm. about the sensitive teeth. Well, do you know what? I I actually secretly filmed you while you were doing that. And we've already cut it together, and we are going to put it out on telly. I what? mean, it's it's going to be very real, and it's what going to be mean? very real. What? How do you mean? It's fine. Look, all you need to know is the sangria's back on. I feel totally violated. You violated my trust, my friendship. Uh, well, I have some free boggins. I was trying to talk to you about my sensitive teeth, and I was using boggins. I'm never going to use boggins ever again now. Okay, we won't use this bit. You've destroyed my relationship with boggins. Now I'm going to have to play some Death Cab for Cutie to make up for it. Oh, God. Oh, well, it's, you bought it on yourself. This is Meet Me at the Equinox. Death Cab for Cutie with Meet Me at the Equinox. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for Retro Text the Nation. And before we play the jingle, we received an email that I'd like I to read that, out to yeah. you. Dear Blameless Adam and Joe. I am a dedicated podcast listener and possible member of Slack Squadron, although I don't fully understand all the pseudo-squadrons you have lurking about. Easy. I am also, for this email, the voice of the people. Why, oh, why is the hypnotically brilliant Retro Text the Nation jingle... Oh, hang on a second. Why, oh, why in the hypnotically brilliant Retro Text the Nation jingle is it thrown in the trash and forgotten about? The word grinds on my ears each time I'm forced to sing along with it. My elder sister and I are such fans that we recently found ourselves unable to sleep in a tent in Texas, singing an Adam and Joe jingle medley, of which I am only a little ashamed. I always sing Bin. For the love of God, what's wrong with Bin? If you choose to ignore my pleas and continue with this random Americanism, feel free to discard this email. But when it disappears forever, it will be in the Bin! I'm fairly sure Adam has nothing to do with those lyrics, so good work, Count Buckyles, from Clem and her sisters Fleur and Blanche in Delaney, Kent. Well, let's have a listen to the jingle and see what they're talking about and listen out for that random Americanism in there. I like to listen to Adam and Joe, but I listen to the podcast, not the live show. I used to feel acute frustration Because I couldn't join in with Text the Nation But now my troubles have disappeared Because Retro Text the Nation's here And now my letter might be read out Instead of thrown in the trash and forgotten about Is that sick of you? You know, it, it never really bothered me before. You know I don't what? It, it actually bothered me when I recorded it. Why did you do it? Well, be why did I do it? Why did you do it? Um, be <laughs> because well, I I didn't have time. I think I did it quite late in the day and rushed into the studio like Holly Hunter in Broadcast News to get it on air in time. Yeah, and it was always gnawing at the back of my brainium. Oh, you and you're like, you're a bit of a bimbo like William Hurt in Broadcast News. Yep, yep, yep a himbo. And so the Americanism was just lodged there in the forefront of your exactly. mind and out it popped. So, and this especially for Clem. Was there a part of you that was thinking, we should broaden our appeal, we should make the show transatlantic in some way? No, I was just being, uh, you know, just being lazy. Right. So I've made an adjustment for Clem and Fleur and Blanche, and from henceforth... This following jingle will be our new jingle. So, you guys, you've, you've changed the fabric of the show and therefore the universe. And space-time, yeah. Yeah. Let's hear it. I like to listen to Adam and Joe But I listen to the podcast, not the live show I used to feel acute frustration Because I couldn't join in with Text the Nation but now my troubles have disappeared Because Retro Text the Nation's here And now my letter might be read out Instead of thrown in the bin and forgotten about Nicely better, amended, it? yeah. It's better. What are you going to do about the fact that it uh, sounds like acute frustration? Like, oh, that's acute frustration. I'll deal with that as well. <laughs> what, what would you like? Just more... Um, well, you say, I used to feel acute frustration. Acute, so I'd need to lengthen the pause. I used to feel acute frustration. Like that. But is that any different? Acute rather than acute. 
acute. Yeah, you're saying acute. Look at that cute frustration. Yeah, but it still sounds like that if、Aww. you say acute. Yeah, that's a cute frustration. Where'd you get it? I'll change that as well. If anyone else would like me to adjust that jingle <laughs> in any way,、uh, please. Contact us and I will do it. And that's the end of Retro Texanation. <laughs> no, it's not.、Uh, retro Texanation, just to remind you if you、uh, haven't heard this show before, is if, if you hadn't heard the show before, I wouldn't be reminding you though about anything, would I? So anyway, listen.、Um, it's about, it's a chance for people who listen to this show during the week after the live show to contribute to the Texanation subject, which last week was、uh, run ins with petty officialdom.、Yes. So here are a few of the communications we received during the week. This one. Is from, I, I responded to this one particularly because I'm a, a fellow cyclist. This is、mm. from Alison Lyndon Parker. And she did something which、uh, a lot of cyclists do rather naughtily, which was, is jump over a red light and you know, just carry on cycling. Even though she makes a point of, well, I'll read out her message. She says, I had a cycling related encounter with a motorbike policeman who stopped me for jumping a red light on my bike. I hasten to add that no one was crossing the road, there wasn't even a pedestrian in sight, and the road Ahead was clear, so I took an informed decision to cycle off just before the light turned orange. The man from Chips went through the usual spiel. Did I know why he had stopped me, etc., etc.? And eventually, after around six minutes, summarized by saying that I had acted dangerously and endangered lives by ignoring the red light, and asked if I agreed as he pulled out a small notebook. I did not agree and told him that over and over, and I told him that however much, however much he patronized me, I would never agree as I had made sure the road was clear. I pointed out that he, however, had nearly caused me to fall off. And had also parked his motorbike across one lane of the road, causing two lanes of busy traffic to filter into one, endangering nicely, all、it? road users. He was becoming annoyed, so I also mentioned that he was talking to me as if I were a tearaway teen, which is inappropriate because I'm a 38 year old mother. At this, he threw his notepad on the floor in rage. You don't know whether to kiss me or hit me, do you? I asked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether to kiss me or hit me. <laughs> he was so embarrassed. He told me to get out of here before I throw the book at you. I looked at his tiny notebook on the road in a puddle, smiled at him, and cycled away. That's from Alice. It's strangely, er- a strangely erotic story. It went story. all sexy at the end, isn't it? It's like the beginning of uh, uh, an erotic <laughs> story in, in an adult magazine. <laughs> that would,、uh, yeah. She'd be looking at his tiny little something else in that version. <laughs> That's good, though. She was very cheeky, and it's not,、uh, you're not a Advised to be cheeky to the police, they hate that. No, no, don't say you don't know whether to kiss me or hit me to a cop. <laughs> <laughs> What if、It's、you were a man and you、worked. said that to a male cop as well? She short circuited his, his tiny cop. Yeah,、line. you can do that sometimes to cops. Here's one we got from RJ Barker. Dear Adam and Joe, I went to see the rock band Tool, other rock bands are available, at a huge place in Manchester. While I awaited the band to start, I'd been enjoying a lolly. Cherry flavour.、Mm. Once the lolly was finished, I kept the stick to chew on, partly so as not to litter, and partly in the mistaken belief I would look cool. As I was crossing the arena to visit the gentleman's restroom, lolly stick in mouth, I was stopped by a security guard. You can't smoke in here, he told me. <laughs> It's a lolly stick, I replied, <laughs> while showing him the offending item. I don't care what it is, put it out, he said in a stern manner,、what? while pointing a beefy finger at me. Although there were many clever and witty replies available to me at this point, the security guard was a lot bigger than me and cowered this one out. I apologised and he watched rather smugly as I pretended to stub out my lolly stick on the floor. <laughs> he was then gracious enough to direct me to a bin and tell me not to be caught doing it again. Oh my goodness. I found it very difficult to enjoy the rock band Tool <laughs> afterwards as I felt rebellious rock and roll credentials had been somewhat diminished by the lolly stick incident and my pathetic caving in to the man. Wow, it's appropriate. Maybe Tool have their own special security guards appropriate to the name of the band. Stop out the lolly stick. Stop out. And he actually did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Okay. Sorry.、Got、another one? Yeah, here we go.、Uh, again, this is a bike bell thing,、um, a bike related thing. I had, this is from Tim in Bath. I had my details taken by the police after ringing the bell on a parked bike. 
I was leaving a message on a friend's answer phone at the time, singing a song, and I thought the bell would compliment my vocals nicely, so I gave it a quick ring. A passing patrol car flashed its blue lights. I panicked and started to run away. I rounded the corner to find another car waiting for me. I was busted, like two cars on the wow. bu- on the bike ringing, the bell ringing thing. I thought this was a good time for me to finish my answer phone message, so I parted with, Sorry, I have to go, I'm being arrested! I explained what was going on. I said I was just singing a song. They seemed to understand, and th- apparently they thought I might be trying to steal the bike. On being released, I asked, haven't you got any real criminals to catch? Nice. It's nice a line. Good one. Always a good one. They've never heard that before, the cops. It remains the most crass quip I've ever had the embarrassment to come up with. All this because I rang a bike bell. Also, I was very drunk. Thanks for reading. Keep up the good work. Tim from Bath. We got quite a lot of emails on this subject from people who had actually broken the law. And they <laughs> got really indignant about being caught. Well, there's shades of law breaking. I know. Though, this is it? all about the, uh, you know, powers of enforcement trying to use a little bit of discretion. Discretion is Rather the key than being word condescending here. and officious. They're sticking to the letter of the law. Here's a good one from Phil Webb in Acton. Uh, he says, I was on holiday in a ski resort in France when I thought I'd go for a nice relaxing swim. When I went to the pool in my shorts, the lifeguard took, shook his head and pointed to a sign that had a picture of a man in shorts with a line through it. He explained in French that I could only wear Speedos in the pool. <laughs> when I said that I'd paid and that I didn't have any Speedos, he suggested I borrow a pair at the pay desk. Feeling very wound up, I demanded to borrow some permitted swimwear at the reception. The woman there produced a wet pair of Speedos that an eight-year-old would have difficulty squeezing into. Rather than lose my admission fee, I wrestled my way into them, returned fuming to the pool with my chudleys bursting at the (laughs) seams. I found the lifeguard, pointed at my crotch and declared, Vous êtes contente maintenant? (laughs) Zut alors, mon pantalon. (laughs) Vous êtes contente maintenant? Zut alors, mon pantalon. That's from Phil Webb in Acton. It's the new single by Wild Beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad, though, when you get made to put on clothes. In, in, like, when you go into a restaurant and they make you put on a tie or a it's jacket. It's the visual image, though, of yeah. the Chudleys. Certainly. Bursting out bo- on both sides. Also, the unpleasantness <laughs> of putting on a wet pair. And that being enforced yeah. by the pool. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Thank you very much indeed cool. for all your messages throughout the week. And uh, don't forget that you can contribute in any way, not just for retro textination, by emailing us at adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. And there's another textination coming up in like about 13 minutes because it's the only idea we've got. <laughs> Here's a free play. This is yours, Joe. Is it? Yeah, this is lovely. This is John Holt. Uh, This is some reggae from the 60s, or possibly the 70s. I'll find out while it's playing. I only know Help Me Make It Through the Night by John Holt. Is this a good one? Obviously it is. This is is a good one. It's called Alibaba. That's Noah and the Whale with Blue Skies. Um, I wonder if they're... No, of course, they're nothing to do with... Is it Noah Wiley from ER? Is that the actor's name? Yeah. (laughs) Maybe he's a fan. He is a band that sounds a bit like my name. That's how he speaks in real life. You know, in ER, he sounds sexy and together. In real life, that's how he talks. Oh, have you seen Noah in the world? That sounds like my name, Noah Wiley. I want to, we'll buy the album. So this week, Joe, yeah, um, <laughs> my son uh, was at uh, breakfast and suddenly he pipes up. Hey, Dad, my maths teacher said he heard you on the radio. And he said he thought Joe was really, really funny. Yes. Nice. And then my mum, who can see that my feelings are tiny little bit dented there, says, did he say anything about daddy too? And he says, no. <laughs> <laughs> but then very sweetly, right, trying to save my feelings, he said, sorry, dad, no, I'm afraid not. He did. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do you know, that's a thing. Parents always like your friends more than they like you. Right. Do you get that when your friends come to your house? They always seem to take a real shine to the friend. Uh-huh. Because they don't know that the friend's an idiot hole. Yeah. They don't know what you know. I found that a lot when I was a child. I'd feel inside, well, if you like Timmy better than me, then have him as a son and I'll leave. Yeah, maths so teacher. Though. similar kind of thing. I mean, that's no good if the maths teacher is more of a fan of you than he is of me and he's dealing with my son well your son is a kind of piece of you yeah so in a way yeah but that's what i'm saying he's every time he gets something wrong in maths class he's going to be thinking 
typical corn balls would have got that yeah well corn balls would have corn balls his son would have done that yeah 398 sir exactly 44 squared sir oh, he's got all the answers <laughs> here's a message we got from sarah and Maisie as well uh this says sarah and Maisie, is that right hi adam and joe my three-year-old Maisie. okay there we go my three-year-old uh, Maisie asked for some telly time recently and requested the funny film with the piano uh, which is laurel and hardy's the music oh, box she meant the piano a family favorite no not the piano <laughs> kids love that film <laughs> the music started and laurel and hardy's faces filled the screen and Maisie excitedly shouted it's adam and joe well, that's not particularly flattering to either of she us. She says, I hope you take this as a compliment. How would that be a compliment? Well, they're very funny and fa very famous. That's true. They are comedy geniuses, but we're clearly not comedy geniuses. So all we can assume is that we look a bit like Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, one of is us bad. is short and one of us is tall. Yeah. You're in no way large, though. Well, large. Not at all. Look, you, stocky. You, not anymore. You spit a <laughs> tiny bit. You've lost it all now. It's true. I'm trying to be flattering. <laughs> Thanks, man. At least for the last 10 years, I'd say yeah you've been very uh trim and svelte thanks very much yeah so right. what about you how are you dealing with being like the long thin guy ah uh, all right all right how old is this person three three i'm not gonna get angry are you not yeah when she's a bit older i was absolutely furious i went around and shouted, <laughs> shouted in her face <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean look at me am i like a huge fat man no i'm not i've got a beard Mommy. i've got a he does he ever have a beard Mommy. no he didn't get away from so why don't you keep your opinions to Jeffrey, yourself? Call the police, Jeffrey. For Maisie, Pass if me that is your name, get out. Is right? That what happened? Yeah. What Her mum was crying. The oh cops turned up. God. <laughs> you were wrestled out for hitting. I a went toddler. to prison for three days. I didn't hit the toddler. Did you though? No. I, I, well, the, you claim it was accidental. Well, the cops restrained me before I could get to her. But oh. I mean, it was a scene You're of disgusting. carnage. So I'm just saying, listeners careful all right just be careful what you compare us to otherwise that could happen here's pulp stupid trees that's pulp excuse me i have a little bit of a um a bit of phlegm in my throat there a little bit of boggins up there a little noggins. bit of boggins in the noggins that was taken from their 2001 album we love life was that even their last album i think um that's the one that absolutely sucked their will to live was that 2001 Anyway, so many song, questions. So many questions. It reached number 23 in the UK singles charts. Fact Did you fans. get your precious photos? Did you get your precious photos? Listen, uh, we have a segment on this show called Made Up Jokes where we get listeners to send in jokes that have to be authored by themselves. That's the whole point. It's not a lame joke section. Some people think, oh, I've got a joke for your lame joke section. It's not about lame You've jokes. You've got to have made it up. It's about made up jokes. So a subtle difference. It's been tricky for us to impose that criteria because how do you tell who has authored a joke how can you prove that you know a particular person has actually thought of it first i mean just to underline the fact that these are made up jokes let's have the jingle think about it i'm a funny person i often make up jokes make up my jokes. jokes are more amusing than those of other folks when you hear my joke i think you'll find that you agree come on you're all invited to a made up joke party you see, they're funny jokes, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't use your gavel yet, Judge Sorry, Reinhold. Mate. So listen, uh, we had a joke in from a chap called James Hewitt, uh, and it went, how did it go? I think it was something like, how much do they play, how much, how do, much they do they charge to play sports at Hogwarts? Yeah. The answer was a quid each. Because they play yeah, quid yeah. Each. So, okay, so that all happened, and we read it out on the show, and life continued but then we were made aware of a popular young comedian who you may well know josie long appears on telly wins awards very funny woman uh and on the twitter website she was complaining that that was her joke not only that uh that it was the sort of basis for five minutes of her current stand-up set and by broadcasting this Quidditch joke on the show, we had pulled the rug out from under her stand-up. But, in fact, we can hear this from the horse's mouth, so to speak, because Josie's on the line. Hello, Josie. Hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is quite a serious part of the show, because obviously some quite troubling accusations have been made by you. People get very upset about joke theft i mean people like stuart lee they do whole routine routines about joke it's a theft. big scandalous thing in the world of comedy but josie tell us how how this happened how this joke has affected you and and, and your life <laughs> well um <clears throat> i i wrote that joke about 
um, about a year and a bit ago. Allegedly, And yeah. I, uh, recently I've just started really enjoying mucking around with it. Like I, I would do, do that bit of the joke and then I would sort of do this really prolonged routine about how they do a register, um, about who, who's paid the pound and who's not paid the pound and how basically that's the entire book. Yeah. And it, I, I really enjoyed doing it. So it's, it, it, and I appreciate that. I think it's probably sort of a, it's a pun and, you know, anyone can reach a pun and all that, but I, I, I don't know. But, but listen, is, like is it joke. not true now that when you tell that joke, what, what happens when you, t what happens when well, you tell that joke now? You see, last Saturday my friend texted me because I was out and he's like, your joke is on Adam and Joe. And I was like, oh, how brilliant. I love Adam and Joe. And then he's like, no, someone is texting in saying your joke is theirs. And I was like, what? And then that night I had a gig. And I did the joke, just thinking, well, I'll see, you know. But And then people shouted out, Adam and Joe. And mm. I was like, no, it's mine. Someone nicked it off me. Bad and then one. they looked at me like, you vile pedant. <laughs> and then ever since, like, I can't do it. Right. And, and it's not that in my head it's different. It's that when I try and do it, it doesn't work anymore. So we're going to take this to the, to the, to the joke court. Adam's going to preside now. But what are we saying here? Are we saying that James Hewitt stole the joke from Josie? He well, that's what, that's what you're accusing him of, right, Josie? What's your accusation here? Well, uh, oh, I, although I'm willing to admit that we both could have come up with the joke... No, that's impossible. Like that's put, impossible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'd like to put forward as evidence yeah. the fact that um, you, I've heard that this man is from Australia and mm. I have done the Melbourne International Comedy Festival <gasps> the, in March this year right. where, at the Hi-Fi Club, on, on two this occasions... This is good. Get angry. Come on. Joke. On two occasions, you did the joke at the Hi-Fi Club in Melbourne, Australia. Mate, were you at the Hi-Fi last night? Oh, mate, there was an amazing Hogwarts joke there. I'm going to steal it we for my own pleasure, and then later I'll it. ring in an English uh, <laughs> radio station, and that'll get my revenge. I'm going to phone in 19 different countries and <laughs> get respect from lots of different lazy early morning Saturday shows around the world. Hewitt, you madman. That, <laughs> that plan might oh, just Hewitt, work. Oh, you giant drongo. Shut up! Tell Hewitt. Tell Hewitt. You baboon's ass. Hewitt's gonna get it. Right. Look, okay. but this is the thing, Josie. We're gonna have Hewitt on at about <laughs> sometime after eleven. We're gonna get Hewitt on. You're going somewhere at ten thirty, right? And he's yep. he's umpiring a cricket match. Oh, later. so it's we couldn't get you. Convenient. We couldn't get you both on air at once. Man to umpire. So so listen. We would like now, Josie, to record like a ten second statement to you from you to James that we're gonna play back to him later in the show. Are you ready for that? So you've got, do not please do not swear. I know you the depth of feeling we're dealing with swear. here, but try not to swear. Your ten second statement to James starts now. Right, Hewitt, listen to me. I know you stole the joke. It's my bloody joke. It come out of my imagination. You wanna write a joke? You write a joke about your cricket umpire. Alright, that's it. Or your <laughs> lifestyle. Time up, sorry. Superior Time up, flowers. please. Stand down. Stand joke. down, calm down. Never Security again. She's gone insane. <laughs> She's lost it. <laughs> That's Judge Reinhold's gavel there. <laughs> um, so we're going to play that back and we're going to get to the bottom of this. But just to finish this off, Josie, uh, can you try and tell us and describe the precise moment that you invented this joke? Do you have any witnesses or circumstantial evidence? Well, I just heard the word quid each and I thought it sounded a bit like the words quid and each. And then I thought really long and hard about how I could make it so that it worked. And then I thought of all the silly stuff about them taking a register. When and was I thought, this? When was this? We're going to have a good old laugh here. How long ago was this, Josie? It, it was last July. Last July. I have no proof, though. And also, you know, I'm not claiming to be the greatest comedian in the world, but Aren't all you? I want is, you know, it's, it's my fun joke that I enjoy performing, and it's now I July. can't do it Thank anymore. Much. I'm really yeah. sorry. Josie, well, it's a tragic story, and we're going to do our best know, to get to the bottom of it. My friend texted me and went, oh, was it the really funny one about opal fruits? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going to get to the bottom of this, Josie, and we'll let, we'll, you, we'll let you know what happens, but thank you very much for talking to us. Oh, you're very kind. I hope you have a nice rest of show. Hey, thanks a lot. And you know, you're so brilliant. One joke oh, out of your set, that's not going to make you replace it with an even stronger one. You'll bounce back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's the <laughs> lovely and brilliant Josie Long, listeners. And we'll be uh, playing that clip to James a bit later and getting to the bottom of this. And somebody will be physically punished. There will be blood.
My money's on James. Here's Monsters of Folk with Say Please. Monsters of Folk with Say Please. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Sorry, Music. Mate. That's all right, mate. Adam was just in the little, um, little boy's room. He's in the Danny. What were you doing in there, mate? I was looking at myself in the mirror, mate. Every day, off he goes. In the middle of dinner or lunch, he stands up and off he tiptoes up the stairs into a little room. What does he do in there? What are you talking about, mate? Every now and then, I follow him and put my ear to the door and I hear a tingling of water. What is he doing in there, in his little room that he tiptoes into every ten minutes, every day? What <laughs> does he do? A splish splash, I hear the sounds of tingling. What is he doing in there? Oh, I see. Bit of both, mate. Front and back. What? Dear me. Listen, we got an email, listeners, uh, from somebody called... Oh, mm, that's called? funny. David Glover. And he says, Hi, Adam and Joe. I was in Tesco this evening. Other supermarkets are available. And as I, wa and as I was walking past the demo TVs, which were running a Tesco promo on a loop, I noticed that the music seemed rather familiar. I recorded it with my phone. Have a listen. Yeah. What? That's the text, the nation jingle, isn't it? Well, it's certainly part of it. What's going on there, Adam? I mean, What's you must have... There, I mate? thought the text, the nation jingle was an original composition that you slaved long and hard to compose. <laughs> so did I. Is someone copying you there, mate? No, what's happening there, mate, <laughs> is they're using the same bit of softy, softy wear that I used, Garage mm. Band, and that's like pretty much the first loop you come across in garage band it's called 80s synth so it's basically the sign of a very very lazy composer totally lazy composer and not only that but he's strung together all the other loops that come in that little block just one after the other at least i varied mine a tiny bit not very much though should we hear our one text the nation text 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 the nation what if i don't want to text the nation but i'm using email is that a problem it doesn't matter text I mean, there's, there's even less to mine than... than to <laughs> yeah, but you got there first. I feel very That's insulted thing. always that, you know, when people are just not aware. Like, wasn't anyone in Tesco's at that meeting saying, hey, this is like the Text the Nation jingle on Adam and Joe's show? I mean, obviously, I'm implying that everyone listens to this program, which is not the case, but one person in the whole of the Tesco organisation? Nah. That's a shame. It's an absolute shame. It's a disgrace. But thanks for sending us that, David. If you can spot the, uh, ooh, <coughs> a little bit of a cough there. If you can spot the text, the nation jingle uh, anywhere else, give it to yourself. I had a bit of a hot chocolate there, listeners, and I, it's done something to my throat. It's gone all gunky. Has it? In there. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's not a proper hot. Do chocolate, you ever get that when it? you when you drink some types of drinks like some fizzy pop and they just coagulate all the stuff going on in your throat in an unpleasant way? No, it never happens to you. No. Listen, uh, we're going to have another record. Then we'll come back and do text the nation. So stand by your texting machines. Uh, here is what's this? Oh, this is a free choice. Now I'm DJing tonight, listeners, at a club called the Thirteenth Floor which is run by the brilliant comedy writer Dan Mayer. He writes for Harry Hill's TV Burp, and he organises this kind of 60s psychedelia soul and pop club at the Albany Pub. It's downstairs at the Albany, 240 Great Portland Street. And I'm going to be doing a couple of uh, short DJ sets there. The night starts at 9pm, and it would be great to see you. So pop down. But that's why I'm theming my free plays this week as uh, little 60s nuggets. I don't know if I'll play this one, because it's a little bit slow, but I really love this song by Funny Papa Smith. It's Hungry Wolf. Probably not from the 60s, though, is it? Did uh, you find out when it was from? Well, no, because you, you type these things into a search engine, and actually the internet's not that great for easily finding music details. You know, all you go, you get taken to a load of uh, annoying, spurious sites. There's that, usually a discography for each artist on Wikipedia. Yeah, nothing for Funny nothing Papa Smith. Nothing for him. Right. Well, I'm sure one of our listeners will tell us. I was a little bit worried that after the long <laughs> and ambitious spiel about the theme free plays, a track possibly from the 50s kicked in or even earlier yeah. you can tell. but there we go um it's time for the, uh, text the nation now listeners <laughs> I can't remember the email. Lee Hedman, ladies and gentlemen! 
It was a, a collaborative effort there on a text nation jingle. Uh, Lee Henman was the man that provided me with the backing track there. And don't forget, if you would like to do alternate backing tracks for any of our jingles that we can then retool and have... Yeah, uh, there's one coming up next week. I got one during the week, a kind of Brazilian version of the nice. retro text nation The guy did a music bed, and he managed to figure out the BPM precisely. Uh-huh. And he said, look, slot this in, it'll slot into the retro text nation vocal. And it did. Wow. Perfectly like a glove. It was amazing. We'll be playing that next week. So Text the Nation this week, listeners, is inspired by a trip to the Westfield Shopping Centre that I undertook earlier in the week. Have you been there yet, Joe? No. It's around Shepherd's Bush. You know what I'm talking about there, right? Yeah, I do. It's a colossal uh, capitalist cathedral yeah. that they have erected there. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty overwhelming. I mean, it is huge and uh cavernous and you get the feeling it's all chain stores though isn't it is it no not all of them has it got any unique special little sh- shops with character i'm assuming it's just like a massive character you high say. street you know what i mean or a shop that i can't <laughs> see the point in going when all those shops have all the same things in them and there's one in every well high all, street it's in all under country. one roof isn't it it's homogenized it's all under one Britain's roof. homogenized high street so you can wander around the cathedral mm. and there's little play areas for children oh that's Useful for and you know you can have gigs there and bands and mm. pas and all sorts really? of things and and there's all the kind of shops that you might want to go to all under one giant roof right so that's the, that's the theory that's of why the it's theory. good and you can easily spend you got free wine well, you know what you, you you can be pro it i'm gonna take an opposing view sure. i think it's a big old crap shack i mean the, the the strange thing about it is that it's so glossy and expensive looking i hate it you think why how how long can they maintain this especially in the current harsh i think it's pernicious climate i'm not sure what pernicious means but i think it's pernicious do you mm. but now you see i'm being a little skeptical about it so you have to back I down lo- from I'm your... starting to like it <laughs> play areas you say <laughs> free sweet samples a gigs by bands yes Ooh. anyway i went into one of the many clothes shops they have there and um Am I allowed to say the name? I mean, it's, I'm describing the shop specifically. So other will, shops are available. Other, other clothes shops are available. It's called Hollister, and I believe it's part of the Abercrombie and Fitch uh, chain. <clears throat> and uh, that was the work of a man called Mike Jeffries, right? He, I think, is the uh, genius behind Abercrombie and Fitch and, and Hollister. And he's created an elaborate fictional story, right, to give meaning and feeling to the image of the Hollister concept. I don't know this store. What does it sell? Clothes? It's clothes, right? Well, let me tell you, first of all, that Hollister, it's called Hollister, California. And the shop itself, which is inside the mall, is supposed to resemble a beach shack or surf shop, right? Ooh. It's got it's got shuttered windows. So it's like a house within a house type thing. And there's light uh, and dark brown walls and teal boardwalks on the exterior. Mm. So you're going up someone's porch, right? And there's a couple of seats sat out on the porch there. Really? Are there people in the seats? Uh, no. You can sit in the seats if you want to. Really? Yeah. And uh, so it's like being in a real place where someone lives. In the center of the store, there's a lounge area with chairs uh, on which blankets are folded. And there's dozens of bits of surf or general popular culture magazines piled up beside them, along with potted palm trees, right? The store's interior, and there's several of these stores. I think there's three in the UK. They're very dimly lit with spotlights above mm. the merchandise, right? So the whole place mm. is, is quite... It's ashamed of being a shop. It wants to be a living space, a house. Right. It wants to fool you into thinking you're in someone's house. Not just a house, but a kind of spookily, a moodily surf lit shack. house. Surf shack. Uh, the whole shop is divided into two sides. There's a dudes section for yeah, boys. Right. And the other section is the Betty's oh, section. Oh, Betty's. For girls. That's what they call them in California. Really? In surfing circles. Uh, there is room spray, scented room spray uh similar to the socal cologne that's their brand that they sell there sprayed directly onto the clothes and the mannequins the store is scented every 60 minutes good uh and is mandated that which is mandated by corporate policy yes right woe betide you if you do not scent scent the mannequins every 60 minutes (laughs) imagine the plunge in sales it's heavily air conditioned in there right you go in and it's really cold Well, hence having to rescent every 60 minutes like it's really i mean they must be just torturing it's not cold in california though oh i guess it's air con it's super air con yeah yeah. uh the staff 
are all aged between about 20 and 25. Good. I hate the over 25s. So do I. They're ugly and they're basically dying. And the good news is that they are much more attractive than any of the customers that they could possibly get in there. Like, clearly, there has been well, a store Abercrombie policy. Abercrombie and Fitch got in trouble, in legal trouble, didn't they, for refusing to... In no, they had a, a, a slightly disabled woman, I think, with a... No, we can't talk about this. It's because it's a legal thing, castle rules. But they were in trouble for being selective with who they hired. Allegedly. On physical grounds. Allegedly. Uh, well, it looks as if, and obviously I'm, I've got no clue if they've got a, an actual hiring policy at Hollister, but it certainly looks as if they've got something similar there because everyone is extremely sexy and there's extremely loud music playing and uh it's just it's it's an insane atmosphere. so listen i'm, I'm gonna have to jump in here well you have to hold that thought listeners because we have to do the news oh yeah the news. we're past the news so we'll we'll bring this round to the thing we want you to text in about any second until then here's the news <laughs> that was uh the go team with lady flash just laughing because we got an email from someone informing me that the funny papa smith record that i played earlier on boasting about the fact that i'm doing a 60s dj set tonight and this was the kind of thing i was going to be playing was from 1931 so <laughs> according to christina and swindon's dad yeah we're yeah. not even sure that that's true we don't this isn't a show about facts no <laughs> it's purely but it's a fit this is a, this is a fictional program yes right it's so, filed in the fiction section so when i said it was from the 60s we've got a little jingle that oh no we haven't got it yeah, here oh go. here we go that was a specious act that's our specious fact jingle. Yeah, it might be useful to have that standing by, you know, more often. <laughs> now, we were, we were, we sort of timed it badly just before the news, but we got into Text the Nation, and I was talking about the fact that I went to the Westfield Shopping Centre in West London, uh, amazing palace of uh, consumerism, and there was a shop in there called Hollister, which is um, basically designed to look like a kind of Californian surf shack. You go inside, and it's very dark, very dimly lit, extremely cold air conditioned to the max and uh the place is perfumed and scented every 60 minutes it's every, they spray the mannequins and all the clothes with this special perfume uh the staff are uncommonly attractive yep. like weirdly good looking to the extent that you assume there must be some kind of hiring policy obviously i wouldn't like to speculate uh i'm sure uh that that might be a uh, complicated legal issue so what we're going to ask you listeners is for ideas for your crazy retail ideas right, right. shops these days they're ashamed to be shops People don't like just, like, goods on shelves. No. No, that's too boring and prosaic. We need a retail experience. We need an, an environment that transports you, goods that aren't just goods, that are kind of defined in some kind of freaky context. We'd like your ideas for new retail experience concepts, the most idiotic shopping concept you can think of. Yeah. And, and I bet you that, you know, it, it'll be out there somewhere. Because basically it comes down a lot of the time to just, like, selling socks and T-shirts, right? And they're not particularly special. Uh, they're just like orange T-shirts with a little bit of writing on. So you've got to jazz your shop up and make it as loony as possible for people to go in there and think, wow, I'm part of a sexy shopping experience. I've definitely got to have that orange T-shirt with the writing you know on. what would make me buy stuff? What? Is, because I like this idea of only very sexy stuff, mm -hmm. under 25. What if they hit on you? Because in shops, they come up and say, have you found what you're looking for, sir? Yeah. Everything okay, sir? So why not just make that a bit more flirty? I was thinking the same thing. Hey, hey, good looking. <laughs> hey, hey, have I seen you somewhere before? Like prozies. What are you doing here? You smell good, baby. <laughs> I was How thinking, about that? yeah, like I that. like it. Like this. What you doing? Because that, they're clearly a bit <laughs> thick, <laughs> and that to me is sexy. Sure, you know, because it's easier with thick people. With a thick person, you can confuse them. So they're to, thick. Bed. They're thick, and they're really good looking, <laughs> and they make a pass at you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could go the whole way with that. Well, I was you? thinking. You? I was thinking um, that. At the checkout counter, so once you've mm. actually bought something, once the deal is sealed and mm. the card has gone through and you've entered your pin, etc., you get a long kiss from the person behind the checkout <laughs> really? counter. Really? What sort of a kiss? Like tongues and everything. Really? Sure. How would that work? How do you mean? Well, it's... Well, from the staff's point of view. I'm getting deja vu here. Haven't we had this discussion before <laughs> <laughs> about how you hygienically arrange for random strangers to repeatedly oh, yeah. see something we're preoccupied with? I don't know. There's some mouth spray or something. 
<laughs> well, as you go into the shop, you have to agree to have your mouth de-sanitized, you know, or sanitized, mm. not de-sanitized. And then, so then the <laughs> staff, a different shop. you know, the staff get shots at the end of every day and there's a doctor standing <laughs> by. It's all, I thought it's all fine. It's all doable. And what does this shop sell? T-shirts, like orange T-shirts with writing on. Orange T-shirts with writing on. The text number is 64046. The email is adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. We've started this text the nation quite late. Look, it's 10.45. We've only got an hour and 15 minutes to do this. So please get your ideas in as quickly as possible. 64046, music at bbc.co.uk. Here's The Doors with Love Her Madly. That's The Doors. With Love Her Madly, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. If there was a film about the doors, say someone made a film about the doors. Crazy idea. And they wanted to capture the moment when they came up with one of their famous riffs. Like the riff from Light My Fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that be a good scene? How would that scene go, I wonder? Well, because of time constraints, you'd have to speed the whole creative Mm, process mm, up a little mm, bit. mm. So you could get the Ray Manzarek character to play some kind of experimental riff. And, uh, and then, like, the next time he could play the actual riff. Right, so he thinks of it really quickly. Yeah, yeah. That would be good. Someone be should very do that. a good dramatic scene. Um, now, I was on the train earlier this week. Uh, it was one evening, and it was 8 p.m. I was getting on the train from Liverpool Street. I was very tired. been working all day in the mine. And uh, it's exhausting work down there in the mines. And so I was looking forward to a nice little snooze, and I went on the quiet carriage. Do you like the quiet carriage? I love the quiet carriage. Everyone likes no the mobile quiet. phone use. No, and no uh, audio equipment. No, la- you know, because they're trying to avoid what they're trying to avoid. Obviously, is uh, lunatics on phones having very loud conversations, mm. and they're trying to avoid people with their with rubbish headphones turned up way too loud. So it's right. That was a terrible little beatboxing bit of stuff there, wasn't it? That was awful, and. So you've got the lovely quiet carriage, the oasis of calm that is the quiet carriage. And you've got all the stickers up, right? Like on every single window with shh cartoons, right? Mm. People going shh. So if you don't speak the language, you can understand that this is a place to be quiet. You have to shh. And then there's announcements as well, just to underline the fact further. Just before you leave the station, welcome on board the train. And every time you stop at a station, quiet carriages are A and B, and they've been designated quiet zones. Please refrain from using your mobile phone and using audio equipment in these carriages. Thank you very much. So there's absolutely no excuse for not knowing the quiet carriage rules. And I got on this train last week that was not full in any way. So it wasn't as if, like people had to sit in the quiet carriage um but these three guys right get Mm. on the quiet carriage and about five minutes after we pull out of the station more or less simultaneously their phones go off and they take the calls oh my god one after the other so there's a danny dyer type city spiv you know danny dyer and outlaw i do know danny dyer and outlaw (laughs) (laughs) and he takes the call up bruv yeah what bruv what's doing yeah i'm on the train bruv yeah just left the station bruv yeah i should be an hour or something nah 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 bruv nah i'm knackered mate oh mate mate i can't i can't bruv yeah bruv yeah bruv that's my mate gary were you on the other end of the line that was me that was your bruv yeah my bruv so there was bruv talking right and then there was another guy in a sort of hoodie and he was having a sort of mumble chap yeah you sort of you (laughs) yeah all right he's having his little chat not too offensively loud and then there's a third chap who's talking about djing and he's talking so loudly in such a booming voice that it's like a joke right yeah yeah (laughs) he had one of those laughs yeah right yeah the new single is wicked a voice on that is amazing right yeah yeah we played it last week people went mad right Everyone's looking around the carriage because they're thinking, have we gone insane? This is the quiet carriage. And not only is th- is this guy brazenly taking a call in the quiet carriage, having been requested not to do so by all the stickers and, like, the train guy, but he's doing it at, at, at a ludicrous volume, like as if he's on stage or something. So this goes on for a while. Everyone's looking around. No one's really saying anything. And I, my heart's racing with indignation. With excitement at the possible looming confrontation. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sort of sitting there thinking, someone's got to say something. Because I it's, was looking... And it's going to be me. I was looking forward to my apples. <laughs> and now there's three people having conversations in direct flautation of the rules. So I've got to do it. So I poke my head above the parapet and uh, above the seats, right? And I just shout out, Oi, mate, quiet carriage. 
Nice, nice, nice. Who can argue with that? Right. Simple, non-confrontational statement of fact. Statement of What's fact? the response? Response from a loud DJ guy mm. is to halt his conversation temporarily, look over at me and go, Are you just talking to me? And, yeah, uh, fair point. Who, fair who, point. Fair point. There are three of them. Who are you I talking to? I wasn't singling him out. I said, yeah. no, no, I'm talking to all you guys. You guys. You guys. Hey, you guys. Yeah, I'm rapping across my words, across the, <laughs> the seats to you guys. Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> Guys, quiet carriage. Guys, hey. <laughs> Ixnay on uh, mobile phone nay. Ixnay. Guys. What's that? I don't know. It's whatever. Ixnay. Have you ever it's heard Greek. that? Greek. Yeah, exactly. Kids um, love to talk Greek. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ancient Greek. Oh, he talks ancient Greek. But here's the thing. I got a total 100% success rate Good. on my interferon. They all concluded their conversations. There was absolute silence in the wow. quiet carriage. It was beautiful. And I could feel everyone else in the quiet carriage, right? You were I like could, a hero. I could like, hear their thoughts. Who's that the guy? Who's the beardy guy? He's amazing. Yeah. He didn't care. He just stuck his head above the parapet. He wasn't afraid to, to make his thoughts felt. He wasn't afraid about Danny Dyer getting back in his grill or anything like that. He just said what he thought. And he got a total result. I love him. He's amazing. So I felt brilliant <laughs> for about an hour, right? And then at Ipswich, um, the DJ gets another call. He j he takes it. It's he right back to square one in a really loud Do voice. Do you say something? No. Nah. No. You quit while you're ahead. Quit while I was ahead. And then, to add insult to injury, he strikes up a conversation with one of the other previous offenders, with the mumbling guy. And starts talking about DJing to him. Talking. They're, they're talking. They're, they're talking. And of course, there's no rules against, against talking. Against talking. But he was talking very loudly. Talking loudly. And he kept on looking over at me. Like, yeah, yeah? Are you going to do something about this? Interfere on. I'm talking. What are you going to do about it? I did nothing. But I was fantasizing right the way to my destination about filming him on my camera and doing, <laughs> and doing, doing a link. I thought, would it be funny to get him to do a link to say, hi, yeah, I'm the guy that was talking really, really loudly in the quiet carriage. You're listening to Adam and Joe. Yeah, it would. Where is it? Have you got it? Well, no, because I was worried I'd get punched Damn! in the solar plexus. What would you think, though? If that happens again, should I do it? Well, I think you might be glorifying him and he might think that that was sort of, uh, you know, approbation is yeah, that a word it is but um but then the listeners would know better they would wouldn't they so that would be a victory for the listeners. Yeah, you might not understand the irony yeah well you might be condoning it i, I felt well pretty... done for standing up Thanks. i mean you you're you're kind of a hero in a way you're kind of a national hero it seems to me you you deserve a day a commemorative day yeah and a gold statue but then the rest of the people in the carriage would have been thinking what's happened to what's happened to Barclays? He he yeah. stood up once for our rights but uh, he's a he's a fair weather hero fair weather hero now you got a free play right now joe yeah this is by the kinks this features on the rushmore soundtrack that i was listening to the other day this is from their 1965 album kind of kinks <laughs> it's called nothing in the world can stop me worrying about that girl Ooh, it's like bran ferry and mark bolan in a blender <laughs> it's quite tough to do isn't it <laughs> Next to me, I'm the Ventraban. Look at my child. You're quite good at that. <laughs> <Can't Elvin do. laughs> Devandra Obi Banhart is an American singer songwriter. His first name is a synonym for the Hindu god of rain and thunder, Indra. His middle name is Obi yep. after the Star Wars character. Obi-Wan Kenobi, mm. apparently. Baby, which you just heard, listeners, is out on the 19th of October. It's taken from his album, What Will Be Will Be, which apparently is very, very good. It's out on the 26th of October. How old is he then? He's young. I mean, he's is in he? his tw mid-20s or something. Mid-20s, 77, he is 87, a sexy 97, man. 2007. Does that work if he's named after Obi-Wan Kenobi? That means his father must have been at least 15 when Star Wars came out in 77. 77, 87, 97, 2007, 8, 9, 32. Yeah, that works out. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Shall we get back into Text the Nation? Here's the jingle jungle. Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the Nation. What if I don't want to? Text the Nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Text the Nation this week's all about absurd ideas to make crazy retail shopping experiences, like how you would make 
uh, and design a high concept shop that is more than just a shop it's kind of a, a lifestyle zone here's another thing that i forgot to mention about this actual shop hollister this is something that they don't do anymore but when they first started they had animals in the shop as like a sort of feature as if it was someone's house mm. and the animals had just wandered in pets they had little pets and they had a cat they, right they had a cat there it was called moon um mm. and they had a macaw you know like a parrot and he was called something like F fletch or something Do you think those are focus grouped names <laughs> probably but they were stopped from doing it oh yeah the macaw was called riley a green wing mm -hmm. macaw and it was a a, a main coon cat apparently mm. called fletcher and animal rights activists successfully protested the inappropriate use of live animals as store decor, mm. and the animals were no longer used in those shops after <laughs> November 2000. Right, right, the other thing, though, that one of the things that the animal rights people said was that it was unfair to the animals because the music in the shops was so loud. And this is another thing, is it's store policy in a lot of these shops to have unbelievably loud music, you know what I mean? And if to people, freak your mind out, to yeah, confuse you. If people complain to about... To stop you thinking. That's right. So they overwhelm you. The whole point of text the nation is to think of techniques that can be used to overwhelm the senses in order well, to get you to Well, no, you, you can't suddenly say that. Why not? Because that's not what we said before. No, it is. It's to make... Uh, yeah, to confuse people. Yeah, yeah, to lull them into a false sense of... Yeah, uh, but groovy things. What, what were we saying? Uh, just like crazy mad ideas for shops to enhance your shopping experience. Yeah, you know, but, but, it was a bit broader than that. Here's one. Oh, let's, let's read some. Here's one from yeah. Joe in Essex. His suggestion is a new extreme supermarket which involves you hunting and killing your meat. Market it as the new eat or be eaten range. A new exciting food shopping experience. That's pretty good, isn't it? So you have the livestock wandering around in the supermarket. Yeah, or a sort of wild area and you're given some weaponry. And they're quite dangerous but delicious animals. I was thinking about dangerous animals. I thought that might be nice. In the clothes shop, right, mm. you have very poisonous spiders lurking in some of the cabinets. Yes, and that's ni That's already a nice idea. So you might get bitten. So you're a bit worried. Look at that T-shirt, mate. I really want that T-shirt. But there might be a spider in there. And it makes you even cooler for owning the T-shirt. Exactly. Because people know you've braved the spider. Whoa, you got the black T-shirt with the writing that looks as if it was written ages that's a ago. Very but good actually idea. was written last week. You know, that could be a time with I'm a celebrity get me out of here and in order to get your product you have to reach into a weird hole mm -hmm. and you don't know what's inside there yeah. that's really good you could you could triple the actual manufacturing cost exactly and then you have someone standing by with an antidote if you get bitten mm, or not people or could not. die I mean or that would not. make the papers certainly it would very make good papers. publicity here's one from Tom from the Wolds I want to open a shop. I want to open a shop that sells tropical fish and underwater cameras. To gain entry to the shop, you must enter via a complex valve system akin to a canal boat lock as the shop is underwater. Nice. You must pay with waterproof Australian dollars. The shop <laughs> is called Wet. That's very good. That's very good. Here's one from Andy K from Pool. I want a garden center to actually be a garden. You walk into home base, enter a lift, go to the garden area. It's got grass on the floor fairies flying around a maze on the left and a fountain on the right you know fairies don't exist no but the truth is not part of the equation oh. here reality is not part of the equation yeah if a, if a big retail giant wants fairies they'll have fairies aren't some garden centers like that like big gardens uh yeah but they don't have grass oh and you can't because that's a good idea to combine a sort of park with a garden center sure so these just become places public spaces where everything is for sale you know the guy was talking about wet in wet they have uh water right yes in that shop yeah under we mean to wet um <laughs> i was thinking weightless what about a weightless that's shop? a good idea and I you mean very expensive again you go through an airlock and you're weightless the products shop. are floating around look at those t-shirts floating around there with the writing on that looks as if it was done weeks ago here's one from gill or jill not sure what to do with the g there you could have a shop where you connect with the product dot 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 by making it it's a communal craft experience i think that's a brilliant idea so those production lines in asia where they make electronics you just go in there and you sit on the production line mm -hmm. and you help manufacture, say, 240 flat screens. <laughs> and then you pay a grand and take one home. That's a nice idea. People would do that. I bet you they would do that. I bet you you're right, Kids Joe. would love it. I bet you they And it's simple. All it. you have to do is one little solder <laughs> on one little chip yeah. for an hour. That's a bish, bash, idea. bosh. These are really good ideas. You know, because if you erected, you know, like you get your flat pack uh, from your IKEA-style shop, right? If you're actually part of a production line mm -hmm. putting those things together, 
everyone wins right Everybody because they, wins. they save on the manufacturing costs yeah one last one that's not so good from ian in cumbria my mate's idea for a unique shopping experience was to sell everything in brine this means every item not just things that might be traditionally <laughs> sold in brine clearly a unique selling point but even better would be the special item tuna in brine in brine <laughs> <laughs> so keep those coming in the text number six four zero four six the email adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk here is james brown uh with make it funky jb you know that's not one of my favorite james brown songs it's called make it funky but then after his count in at the top what Two, three, make it. The horns don't sound that funky, do you? Yeah, do you they're laid back. That's the point. They're not they're making an effort. Too laid back. That's too, I like it, man. You can't insult. It's <laughs> probably Maceo <laughs> Parker or someone or Fred Wesley. He needs to pep it up a little. You're cussing the Wessels. If I was the band leader, I'd say, hey, 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 come on, chaps. Now that wasn't funky. Make it a bit more punchy. And they go, who's that cat? Who is that idiot? Hey, cat? wait a second. Isn't that the guy who shouted out in the quiet carriage? Yeah, the fat one from Come Lauren on, Hardy. guys. <laughs> 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 that's the little fat one from Lauren Hardy. Hey, that's, that's the, really the fat accent. guy from Lauren Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, what now? Oh, yeah. If you're a regular listener, you might remember that we have a sort of a competition going, and we can call it a competition because it is a competition. It's actually been sanctioned by the castle. It's all official. Uh, and the prize is, if it could be described as a prize, to join us on stage at the Electric Proms and to perform a Song Wars tune. We've put two Song Wars tunes on our website, uh, bbc.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash Adam and Joe. They're instrumental versions, karaoke versions. They've got the lyrics up there with a little bouncing ball over the lyrics for you to sing along. We're asking you to make a video of yourself performing the song. It doesn't have to be like a pop video, just a straightforward kind of, um, you know, photo booth style. Thing Chocolate you... rain. Yeah, that kind of thing, miming the song. Then you send us, a, you upload it to one of them sites where you upload videos. You send us the link. We look at them and the least insane performance, <laughs> or possibly the most <laughs> insane performance, uh, will be chosen and you'll get to... Uh, join us on stage. You have my Quantum of Solace song or Adam's Nutty Room song to choose from. Last week we announced that we had had no entries, none, not a single one. Uh, this kind of desperate void motivated some of our listeners to submit some videos. We now have 12 entries. How many Quantum of Solace? Three? Three Quantum of Solace. There's only three. Nine Nutty Room versions. So Quantum of Solace underrepresented. Well, it's, it's a lot longer, though, isn't it, Quantum of Solace? And Nutty Room is fairly is short, is so it? that's yeah. one thing. But listen, you don't have to worry about knowing the lyrics. We're going to have a big video screen on the day with the with the lyrics up there. So it's a very low-key. You don't need to be anxious. Dame Judi Dench is furious with All him. All sorts of opportunities for magnificent uh, vocals. So keep those entries coming in and and today we thought we would uh you know encourage you to enter your video but also if you don't feel like performing you could be in the audience we've got we've got what where is it 44 pairs of tickets yeah 44 pairs of tickets to give away the show is taking place on the 22nd of october that's a thursday and it'll be at lunchtime lunchtime so you'll need thursday. to be able to come along that's the hottest slottest I mean, that's when all the kids love to see things. Lunchtime on a Thursday. Yeah. Because it's Thursday lunchtime. Oi, kid! Dum -ts, dum -ts, dum. <laughs> we do it for lunchtime tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's cool because then you've got the whole rest of the day to go out and... It is cool, cos. Carouse, yeah? yeah. So you'll need to be able to come along to the Roundhouse, which is in Camden Town. It's the Chalk Farm area of London. Oh, no, it's Camden Town slash Chalk Farm <laughs> area. I'm trying to read from this page and make it sound naturalistic. I told you not to try and read. <laughs> so, yeah, you can find out more at uh, bbc.co.uk slash six music. Don't be scared by the insane page of rules that uh, are there if you check out how to get your tickets. You do have to register your details, and it is like applying for a visa. It's to like a draw, isn't it? A foreign country. So you just have to apply, and then you get... <laughs> but, but you know the castle there in trouble last year. They've got to be so careful you with stuff like this. You do have like to be this. careful. But we'd really like you to come along because one way or another, no matter who we pick from our uh, competition entrance, it is going to be a fun afternoon. It's going to be And we'd fun. very much like to meet you and hang out. And, um, and the, gonna... you, the performance thing will soon drop off. Yeah. You know, like a sheep's 
bits <laughs> and we're going to bring a <laughs> couple of things a fun party. along to entertain you and it's it's going to be an enjoyable afternoon yeah. so do check it out right registration is open now and it closes on friday the 9th of october at 4 p.m so if you fancy coming along do register on that website and you know i'm sure not many people will uh register don't so say that i'm sure millions of people Thank register you. so don't be disappointed if you don't win <laughs> uh and your video entries if you'd like to actually enter the performance aspect of it they have to be in by the 14th of october so you've still got a little bit under two weeks check out some of the entries we've had already on youtube check out some of the quantum of solace entries i mean they're brilliant but i think they are they're brilliant nutters. shall we say brilliant but disturbing disturbing <laughs> yeah and we've got some amazing close harmony versions of nutty room and stuff we've got mm. a little montage here of some of the versions of nutty room we've had nutty i am a nutty man i'm sitting in my nutty room it's a clue for the cops so i'm pulling out the shots because i am a complicated loo Look at the jars, look at the jars, look at the things inside the jars. I put some fingers, there's some hair and several winkies. Look at the walls, look at the walls, totally covered in daisy scrolls. And from time to time, I add a couple of stingies. I love the smell and the gloom of my crazy nutty room. So come over for some nibbles and some drinkies. A couple of those people were actually in what sounded like real nutty rooms. Well, he changed, one of them had changed it to poo and pooping, hadn't he? Mm -hmm. Knowing exactly where you're comic interests lie <laughs> <laughs> but i'm depressed because nobody's done the quantum oh of come solace, on listen you gotta mad do some good versions of quantum of solace too what no, joe no really wants is some staff from one of those clothing shops yeah. to do a version but no one's even sung the Just quantum of solace for some hands. reason the three men who you know i'm very grateful towards them even though they i think are all in some kind of a prison or hospital they uh, they seem to just say the lyrics <laughs> just declare them they're reading them out from the like karaoke off, screen off the that's rhythm. what we asked people to do i know yeah, they it's a song <laughs> you're supposed to <laughs> sing it not say it like you're kind of had your brain recently <laughs> turned inside you should check out. them out listeners because they are funny there's no, one... i don't want to be disrespectful they're, they're they're very very good they, they just lack a certain joie de vivre that uh yeah that nutty room has <laughs> here's some classic indie music for you this is the breeders with cannonball ah oh, it's an absolute Good smash. noise what a smash that's the breeders with cannonball hey listeners this is adam and joe here on bbc six music delighted to be with you this saturday afternoon can't tell you if the weather's going to improve or not doesn't look it's going to be gaily they said on the Radio 4 weather, as I was driving in, it's going to be gaily. Gaily, right. It's going to be winds of up to 70 miles an hour in the north. There's th it's going to do some battering, isn't it? It's going to be battering parts of England, the wind. Battering What's broken with Britain. The final indignity. I'm not so worried about England, but I'm going to batter parts of England. I'm going to batter Scotland. Once uh, the proud queen of Europe, yeah. now an old haggard tramp. Why are you saying that about England? I don't know. Sort of thing they say on the news. Is it? I don't know, not really. What's the proud queen of Europe now, an old haggard tramp? Yep. <laughs> Is that what Alistair Stewart says? It's what he'd like to say. <laughs> if he had the balls. Got anything lined up for Saturday night, Joe? Exciting things? Uh, I have got some European <laughs> cinema really DVDs. From what you said about Alistair Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> so that bad? vicious. It yeah. was just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the question? <laughs> you got some European cinema yeah. DVDs. Oh yeah. What kind of what kind of thing? I've got um, oh, I've got Dead some, Snow. Some good. No, the new Michael <laughs> Haneke. I've got. I'm Have you? About you him. love Michael yeah, Haneke. I do. I think he's torture. Ah, oh, I like him. W what's his new one then? It's called The White Ribbon. Is it? Yeah. And is it? I'm uh, excited. Yeah, yeah. Who's it's in that? Very one? stoic and black and white. Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Um, who Alistair else is Stewart. in it? Lily Allen. Lily I think <laughs> plays the lead. Yeah. And then it's got the Teletubbies. Right. Are the, are the baddies. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. He's, the, he's the last film star that I can remember. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> well done. Shia LaBeouf, is he in it? Uh, probably. He's a new film he'll star, be, He'll isn't be he? taking over. He'll be in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to be doing with my Saturday night listeners is a little bit of DJing, right? At, uh, yeah, the, your, your 60s tracks. The 60s tracks. I've actually the got ones a 60s that are from the track. 30s. <laughs> <laughs> from the 30s. Right now, here's one from the Human <laughs> League. From the 60s. Uh, <laughs> it's the 13th Royal Club downstairs at the Albany Pub, 240 Great Portland Street. Starts at 9 pm. And I am going to be playing 60s music. <laughs> That's the idea. 
I, I get an urge just to tell people my address and get them to come and watch films with me. Right. Because I want to reciprocate. Sure. You know, you say I'm doing this thing, come on down. I, th- I think, well, what if I got people to come on, come on over? We could all, all the listeners, we could all hang out, yeah. watch some DVDs. You need a communal space, man. I'd, we'd, we'd see some 60s films, you know, <laughs> Jurassic <the> Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All those famous 60s films. <laughs> but that'd be terrible that, because, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so come along. Do uh, do hang out at the 13th floor. Here don't, is a don't piece come along of real 60s my DVD music. Session. No, because that would be an it's invasion private. of your home space. This is the Stones, Rolling Stones, that is. And this is from their album, uh, compilation album, Singles, 1963 to 1965. So it is in the 60s. This is Stoned. That was Gaz Coombs and Danny Goffey from Supergrass trading as Hot Rats with their cover of Gang of Four's Damaged Goods. And Gaz and Danny are going to be on Six Music tomorrow from 3.30. A special show was recorded at Gaz's house earlier in the week and uh, very good it is too, apparently. So do listen out for that. And the trail before was talking about it being Supergrass on Six Music. Not quite true. It's Daz and Danny from Supergrass. But, you know, you can't have Mickey Gaz, Quinn. Did you? what did you just say? Gaz and D- you said Daz and Ganny. No, did I? Yeah. But Spoonerism. Daz and Ganny. Sorry about that. It's all right. Gaz and Danny from Supergrass, but there's no Mickey Quinn, so you can't have Supergrass without the Quinn Meister. Quickie Min. Don't. What are you from doing? From Grupa Sars. <laughs> Here's the news. That's The Doves with Black and White Town. Very beautiful video to that, directed by Lynn Ramsey, shot by Tom Townend. Very lovely uh, video. Lynn there, Ramsey, nice. the done rat catcher. Yeah. Ah. Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Earlier on in the programme, we had the wonderful comedian Josie Long on the telephone, and she was furious about the fact that she reckons she made up the joke about how much do you have to pay to play sports at Hogwarts? Answer, a quid each. That was part of her stand-up act. And since it was read out uh, as the work of James Hewitt on last week's show in the Made Up Jokes section, she has had to drop it from her act, and she's absolutely hopping mad. We've got James <laughs> on the phone right now, and James is in Western Australia. Are you there, James? I am here, yes. Now, James, in order to make you feel more comfortable, <laughs> we will be using our Australian accents... Uh, you will just, if you could just testify to their perfect authenticity. They are, as we say over here in Australia, as we Australians say, as you probably know, they're fair income. Oh, absolutely. absolutely I, I, we, we say that all the time. Now, James, we were chatting just while the doves were playing there, just before we came on air, and we established that you're a policeman, James. That is correct. So this is a little ironic, you being accused of joke theft. You might have to cuff yourself, mate, at the end of all this. <laughs> give yourself a little... You, I've done a full investigation. Give yourself a little bit of a beat-up. So, can you tell us the background? How did you um, make up this joke? Because, of course, you are claiming you made it up, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't have sent it into the made-up jokes section. Of course, of course. Tell us it's the... Just... D- describe the exact moment when the joke came to you. Well, it, Sorry, it, I'll say it, that again it, in Australian. D- uh, tell us the exact moment that the joke came to you, mate. Oh, yeah. Well, it just came to me in a flash of inspiration. What more can I say? I was sat there uh, reading some Harry Potter and uh, watching some Harry Potter, and I had an extremely blonde-haired man next to me, a young Draco Malfoy, and he said, uh, he said, can you lend me a quid? And I said, oh, why is that? And he said, oh, I'm going to go and play sport. And I said, ah, oh, they charge you a quid each. And we all fell about laughing. And since then, it's been my joke. So how do you feel about Josie accusing you of thieving this joke? Because she says she played gigs in Australia. And not only does she say that, but you say in your email to us, in my defence, I have not heard of Josie Long. I googled her and found out that she went to a school about a mile from my old house in the UK. That is that is true? Right. And clearly there's a bit of a long joke theft gone on here. And I want to know where my royalties are, Josie Long. So you're where ac- are my royalties? You're accusing, your you're accusing her of stealing it from you. How could she possibly do that? Are you saying she's got kind of joke spies or she's bugged you in, in Western Australia? I mean, that's it, quite an oh. accusation. Far-fetched, if you, if you ask me, James Hewitt, Officer oh. James Hewitt. Hang on a second. You're supposed to be an independent arbiter. Whose side are you on? I don't really know. I'm just trying to stir something up. 
<laughs> you are. You're the absolute stirrer. Before we came on air, Joe said to James, can you get quite angry, James, about it? Can you act like you're really outraged and that Josie definitely is wrong? working so far, is it? Well, it's... Outraged. It's a disgrace. There you go. It's just when Josie came on, one of the first things she said was, oh, uh, you know, I'm sure we both just thought of it at the same time. I was like, don't, man. don't say that. That's just letting Nonsense. the air out of the whole thing. We're trying to run... Oh. Well, look, here's oh, what Josie, right. here's what Josie actually said. Let's play you a little clip of, uh, what Josie was saying before. Okay. Right, Hewitt, listen to me. I know you stole the joke. It's my bloody joke. It come out of my imagination. You want to write a joke? You write a joke about your cricket umpire. All right, that's it. Or your <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> Time up, sorry. Time up, please. Stand down. Stand joke. down. There Calm down. Never Security! Again. She's gone insane. There you go. That was us I'll talking what, to... I'll tell you what, Long. If you're listening, don't come back to Perth. Your cards oh. are marked. Oh, that's, that's, uh, because maybe if, going too far the other way if there, If Josie plays James. a gig, was it, she, was she at the Hi-Fi Club or something? And, uh, sh if she plays a gig there in Western Australia, then James might, like, fiddle her stats or something. Well, he's a police officer. He could probably get it shut down. Get the whole thing <laughs> shut down <laughs> and busted. Know? Anyway, James, thank you so much for talking to us. How's so, listen, are, are, are we concluding then that, that then this was just a coincidence? Yeah. I think a, a bizarre twist of fate. And who and, and uh, are both these people going to be allowed to use the joke? Do you think Josie should continue using the joke there, James? Uh, if you give her my email address and bank account details, so she can forward me royalties, then she's of course more than welcome to. Do you know what I, do you know what I think? The I mean, the, the fact is that the first day the first Harry Potter book was released, right? Someone yeah. probably would have thought of that joke, and that's You're the criteria right. I think we need to apply to jokes. If the cultural reference in it is old. Yeah. You know, beyond a certain number of years, I think the laws of probability mean that so if it's a simple bit of wordplay, someone would have thought of it. Oh, we just say, need. This is, I mean, far be it for me to mm -hmm. start rowing firmly for sure, but this is not the most sophisticated joke I've ever heard in my life. Exactly, that's very humble of you, and I think the person to blame here is Adam Buxton for reading <laughs> it out and not realising oh. that it would provoke this horrible, horrible contretemps. I thought it was funny. Congratulations, James. I think you're a genius. Thanks for you're coming on, man, James. Man. And do do good umpiring at this cricket match. I will do. Take bye care, bye. mate. Bye bye. Bye bye. Fair dinkum, you guys. Fair dinkum mate. <laughs> Be careful out there. Don't read any books. The only acceptable racism left on the planet. A bad <laughs> Australian accent. Here it's Fun Farlow. This is other worlds coming down. That is Fun Farlow. They're, they're London based, right? They were formed in 2006 by the Swedish musician Simon Baltazar. Mm, mm, mm. And that track is called The Walls Are Coming Down. Singles out now. Second song to be released from Reservoir, their debut album, which was released on Monday. It's time for some more Text the Nations. Here is the jingle. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. This week it's all about uh, your crazy ideas for uh, lifestyle orientated retail experiences. Here's another idea I had, right? Um, you have, uh, apart from the weightless atmosphere, mm -hmm. how about the store is completely frozen? Mm. and then you and this is a clothes store mm -hmm. and you defrost your clothes when you get home mm, so that's pretty good it's a bit pedestrian to be honest yeah i mean there are ice hotels that lazy television programs constantly do features from yeah uh and you know it's just an, i mean i don't mean to be too dismissive or, or wow. cruel but it's maybe too late but um yeah it's a good idea it's a good idea i've changed my mind whoa it's a good idea <laughs> oh no i'm thinking now about all the consequences yeah because good idea <laughs> it's so cold that your brain yeah. that your brain starts to shut down and that's no, what these yeah, stores what want, they want a lot that's of the time they want they want the atmosphere what if they to... just hit you over the head with a sort of kosh mm -hmm. as if the shop could be called kosh <laughs> and they hit you over the head with a bosh how about this kosh w spelt Q O S H, and then they take your money. Yeah, and uh, or you wake up strapped to a chair, and they torture you till you give them your pin number. Right, um, and you consent to it. That's brilliant. Yeah, man. you consent to it, and Gosh. and they they do a or certain Guantanamo. It could be called Guantanamo. Yeah, it's a yeah. political shop. That is nice, and you can just buy orange boiler suits there. Yeah, <laughs> makes life simple. Anyway, here are some ones sent in by listeners. Uh, this is one from Jack West Orham. 
here's an idea for your sexy shop what if all the orange t-shirts this is a shop we were discussing earlier right here's an idea what if all the orange t-shirts with words on them and other clothes were already being worn by sexy people in the shop Good in order idea. to buy clothes you have to strip Undress the them. living mannequins of their That's vestments brilliant. i'm getting excited just thinking about it i'm pinching <laughs> myself <laughs> <laughs> says jack who calls that is brilliant jack and Ori. here's one from rob in birmingham i feel we read out many texts from rob in birmingham he's just a very clever witty chap might be a number of different robs wouldn't it be great if someone opened an underwear shop where the staff wore nothing but their underwear this sounds like a pathetic fantasy and it partly is now however i swear to you it has only ever come into my head as a result of your text the nation now would that be nice or would that be a bit mm, a bit yucky, uh, a bit yucky. no I no because no, they would be so sort of imagine they're really sexy and very clean they're yeah. probably mandated by the management to shower every exactly. hour yeah health checks and, health and checks. Uh, hygiene checks hygiene checks although i was thinking what about just nude staff mm, i don't know you what you, well why they, is they, the poo poo coming out because bits and bobs they'd get everywhere you know you'd be you know, the the pit, chip and pin machine would break. You'd have to do the old thing where you swipe the card through the machine and yeah. your bits would get caught. Why are they and... swiping at that level? They don't swipe that low. They well, have the machine that's the level at nipple the... height. Oh, and everything's at nipple height. And the height. ladies can't operate. They're, yeah, the... but your nipple height's very different from, for instance, my nipple height. It's I wouldn't be allowed on the floor. Meters. Obviously, I would not be allowed on the floor. Well, you, well, well what about if you I'd were a customer? I'd be working in the stock room. <laughs> you, that's the little hairy idea. one. The that's one that looks idea. like... Laurel and Hardy guy. Get in the stock room. Here's one from Liam Mason. I think that on entering the Liam store, Mason. you are given a trolley for you to sit in. All the sales assistants have to whiz you around the shop looking for your shopping. I mean, that's something major, supermar major supermarkets supermarket. could... Supermarket. That's a major that's supermarket. supermarket. That's a supermarket. That is something that major supermarkets could implement tomorrow mm, pushing you around pushing you around in the flipping trolleys i like it <laughs> getting angry <laughs> i said the f word that's the end of our career Drop the f <laughs> uh <laughs> did i read the one about things in brine yeah <laughs> tuna in brine in brine <laughs> it's another one then <laughs> from rob in bed in romford a clothes shop with 60 staff Oh, no, this is the same idea. Oh, God. Well, and they're all new. Shh, Phil. Uh, the, Phil. Good, uh, thanks. Here's the one with Stephen Wells. A shop that sells just coat hangers, but the coat hangers have clothes hanging on them. And when you take them to the checkout, the clothes are removed and you buy the hanger. That's just an idea for a hanger shop. All right, all right, all right. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Um, <laughs> I'd like a shop. This is from you. And I'd like a shop where there are way more shop assistants than customers, like a 10 to 1 ratio. And each one wears the national dress of a different country. They swarm around you, gibbering and fighting and trying to sell you pencils. It would be a stationary shop. <laughs> what? Another one. Graham Bowman. Shop. Shop has no branding. It is a perfect cube painted entirely white. It is empty apart from a single white T-shirt which hangs in the middle of the room. The T-shirt is white. It has no label. It comes in one size, mathematically measured to fit only the perfect human form. It costs £500. One staff member dressed in white sits on a white plastic chair in the corner of the store. They never speak. If you buy the T-shirt, the store closes for the rest of the day. <laughs> I like it. Uh, but then how would people know that you bought your white T-shirt from white? Because it would have the word white written on it in white. In a special no, way. No, it would just be white. Uh -huh. Finally, Pauline in Suffolk. Hi, Adam and Joe. For a new shopping experience, an X Factor style panel of judges in the changing rooms to help people decide how things really look. That's not bad. Yeah, have got one in the corner there. Mm. But that's terrific, isn't it? What an what a amazing uh, lot of messages we got. And if you're listening during the week, don't forget that you can still contribute for next week's Retro Text the Nation, but you can only contribute by email. Texts will not be tolerated! adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk is the email address to send them to. Here's some music right now. This is your free play, Joe. Yeah, this is a hot, hot, hot new band. When, uh, what's he called? Jerry O'Connell... Jimmy Stockings, who does later Jules Holland. Tommy Timkins. Tommy Timkins. When he introduced them the other week, I saw them on uh, on later. Did you? Yeah, it's an innovative underground show sure where you can is. hear new music. He said, here's some music by some exciting newies. He said. Oh, round of applause. Go round of applause is exciting newies. Over here on my left, fridge, fridge, there's a round of applause for the milk. 
Uh, but this is the XX, <laughs> and this is a song from their album called VCR. The XX with VCR. This has been Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Thanks to everybody who's texted and emailed and listened. Don't forget, this show is available in a highlights version in, in a podcast form on, for, on Monday, or you can listen again on the iPlayer all week. Uh, Stay it. tuned for Liz Kershaw. She's coming up next. Have a fantastic week, and we'll be back with you at the same time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.